Hey everyone, my name is Alex Ramsby. I'm an MSP consultant here at Profile Tech. Today I wanted to go over how you can grab the current logged on user profile and pull that back into Automate. Let's get into it. So what you want to do is you want to make a new script or maybe you've already got a script and you just kind of want this logic. So what I've done in here is ideally you would want to resend the system information first. That would then ensure that you have the latest up to date you can also double verify that there's a user logged in under this line too. By under here, if you want to do is uh, console logged on. And if you leave this blank, basically anything in Automate as long as they're logged in. So like if in this case, if I open up this machine that I ran the script on, if anything is showing in here inside the database, whether it's accurate or not, sometimes it's not, it just hasn't checked in recently or anything like that. Um, but this would be the check of that first initial if statement. So if anything is there, then run the next script or run the then statement. So inside of here, I'm doing a secondary check just because I'm doing it all with inside the then statement. If you don't do it this way and you do it in the top here, make sure that you do include something here at the bottom in the if statement or the else statement, because if nobody's logged in, and it is actually up to date and that's current, then you want something down here that says, if nobody's logged in, run this, not the then section. But to keep things simple, in the then section here, I've added the if console logged on, left that same username blank, and I've skipped ahead a couple steps, so I can do the if no user's logged on, the next step is just going to exiting script, and then what I would want to do is inside of here, run like a script exit with error. So that way it would show up as a failed script, not just a successful kind of weird logic. So if no users logged in, log a statement said no users logged in, exiting, script failed. If they did, if they are logged on and it is currently up to date, because you do want to include this resend system information. So all of that's true. You want that logged in user's system path, which you can then kind of utilize as this console shell scripting function. It's very limited what you can do, but you can do, you can kind of push it to your own limits. All I'm simply doing is running, this is just running up of command. So command prompt, like the old style. So if I open up that here, basically what I'm doing is I'm running a, a PowerShell through the original command prompt here. So PowerShell.exe, loading that up, and then I'm running this command through, and that will actually grab my current user's path. So I'm doing that same thing, except I'm running it on the logged in user and just grabbing that console number from that if statement. So inside of here in this if statement, so if console users logged on, if somebody's logged in, this will work for most of the time that it's, it's just a single person. Servers, if you have like an RDP, it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little tricky, but in most of the time it's one-to-one -one for one person to one workstation. So if they're logged in, then set their console number here at this very top to this variable uh, percent console number percent. And then we can utilize that to then in this say, on that console number, run this command. And so we're kind of emulating that user, grabbing that uh, user's profile path. And when we do that, you can do whatever you want with that from here. In this case, I'm just logging it inside of the script log. And if I open the script log here, I can see it was successful. And then in the script log message, current user profile path is just what I typed. And then the C colon, you know, wax users, whack test. That that would be the Windows 11 machine that we were, that I was using as the dev environment. I was trying to use some other PowerShell methods here. That's why it looked a little weird, but I've removed those to make it clear on the video what we're actually doing uh, of what's kind of the proper way to do this. So you can do lots of things from here. This top section is going to be the logic that you're going to need. And then everything beyond that is whatever you're going to do with that information, whether you're pushing an install, pushing maybe a temp file, um, you can do lots of stuff from there. Thanks for watching. We post a new video every week to share our knowledge on Automate. 
To learn more about what we do, please visit ProvileTech.com. There's a link in the video description below.